I'm John Proxy and I'm having an adventure in the Stanley Parable. Channel John of the West. Now, um, I think I've started the game again. I've carried on from the last video and he's just told me to uh, go to the meeting room. So I'm going to run now. I'm not going to look at anything this time. May as well, uh, it's 427. Um, that's my number. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. But I'm going to go on the wrong, on the right. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Well, let's do that then. I, have a, I imagine I won't be able to go back. <sighs> yes, truly a room worth admiring. It had really been worth the detour after all, just to spend a few moments here in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. Stanley simply stood here, drinking it all in. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Do I? No, I'm going to ignore that guy. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't five years ago. <laughs> Do not... Hmm. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. Please, stop trying to make every decision by yourself. Now, I'm not asking for me, I'm asking for her. Who's her? It, Stanley, your chance to redeem yourself. To put your work aside. To let her back into your life. She's been waiting. Hmm. Uh, that's quite an intimidating dark room. Ooh. That's her, Stanley. You need to be the one to do this. To reach out to her. If you can truly place your faith in another, then pick up the phone. Well, it's sufficiently different, so I'm going to pick it up. Oh, Stanley, is that you? Uh, hold on, sweetie. Sorry to keep you waiting. I'm just pulling the bread out of the oven. All right. Okay, there we go. All right, now, I want you to come in and tell me all about your day. <laughs> gotcha. Oh, come on. Did you actually think you had a loving wife? Who'd want to commit their life to you? I'm trying to make a point here, Stanley. I'm trying to get you to see something. Come inside. Let me show you what's really going on here. Hmm. All right, then. Again. This is a very sad story about the death of a man named Stanley. Uh. Stanley is quite a boring fellow. He has a job that demands nothing of him, and every button that he pushes is a reminder of the inconsequential nature of his existence. See, I'm doing what Stanley does. And um, only pressing what I'm told to. Look at him there, told pushing to. buttons, doing exactly what he's told to do. Now yeah. he's pushing a button. Now he's eating lunch. Now he's going home. Now he's coming back to work. One might even feel sorry for him, except that he's chosen this life. So I'm going to press E. But in his oh, mind, ah... In his mind, he can go on fantastic adventures. From behind his desk, Stanley dreamed of wild expeditions into the unknown. Fantastic discoveries of new lands. It was wonderful. And each day that he returned to work was a reminder that none of it would ever happen to him. Let's watch some television. And so he began to fantasize about his own job. First, what? he imagined that one day while at work, he stepped up from his desk to realize that all of his co-workers, his boss, everyone in the building had suddenly vanished off the face of the earth. The thought 
excited him terribly. Spend some time with the boys. So he went further. He imagined that he came to two open doors and that he could go through either. At last, choice. It barely even mattered what lay behind each door. The mere thought that his decisions would mean something was almost too wonderful to behold. As he wandered through this fantasy world, he began He's to fill it with many office. possible paths and destinations. Down one path lay an enormous round room with monitors and mind controls. And down another was a yellow line that weaved in many directions. And down another was a game with a baby. And he called it the Stanley Parable. Well, I've done one of those. It was such a wonderful fantasy. And so in his head, he relived it again. And then again, and again, over and over, wishing beyond hope that it would never end, that he might always feel this free. Surely there's an answer down some new path, mustn't there be? Perhaps if he played just one more time. Oh, I pressed... is it zero? But there is no answer. How could there possibly be? In reality, all he's doing is pushing the same buttons he always has. Nothing has changed. The longer he spends here, the more invested he gets, the more he forgets which life is the real one. Well, this is depressing. And I'm trying to tell him this, that in this world he can never be anything but an observer, that as long as he remains here, he's slowly killing himself. But he won't listen to me. He won't stop. Here, watch this. Stanley, the next time the screen asks you to push a button, do not do it. Um, well, I'm going to take a sip of beer. Obviously, I have to press that button, but I can try and put it off, see what happens. Alright, well, I very much enjoyed that beer. I don't think anything's going to happen until I press the I, so... <sighs> you see, can he just not hear me? How can I tell him in a way that he'll understand that every second he remains here, he's electing to kill himself? How can I get him to see what I see? How can I make him look at himself? It's a question. Press wide question I nothing. I can't. Not in the way I want him to. But I don't make the rules. I simply play to my intended purpose. The same as Stanley. We're not so different, I suppose. I'll try once more to convey all this to him. I'm compelled to. I must. Perhaps, well, maybe this time he'll see. Maybe this time. And I tried again. And Stanley pushed a button. And I tried again. And Stanley pushed a button. And I tr Hmm. Did I die? Oh dear. That's what I get for trying to not follow anything he sell me. By following him, I had freedom. Anyway, appears the game has started again. It's been a, quite a short one. So I've been uh, John Proxy having an adventure in the Stanley um, Parable. Yeah, that's it. Uh, I'm Channel John OS, and I'll see you next time.